This morning, uh, I have an opportunity to talk to a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jeff Craig, and he is running for uh, governor for the state of Delaware as a Republican this year. And as a little piece of history, Jeff Craig's father, Ernie, uh, who died a few years back, he was the one that first, uh, first approached me about running. So I have a, a big soft spot in my heart. Uh, either that or I'm really angry at, uh, at, uh, at Jeff's dad. But anyway, Jeff, it's very good to see you. Great to be here, Charlie. Thank you for, uh, for coming in this morning. Um, and, and for a lot of folks, frankly, in the city of Wilmington, this, uh, this may not be the first time they've heard of you or from you, because I know you've been around doing some retail politics sure. stuff. But, uh, but this may be a good opportunity for them to, to meet you, find out your history, find out where you stand on issues, find out what your campaign is all about. So why don't we sort of start with, uh, with the, uh, the, the number one spot is, who is Jeff Craig? Uh, where do you come from? What's your, what's your background? Uh, I've lived up in Brandywine 100 with my wife and my four children. We've been up there 20 plus years. Uh, we own the uh, mailboxes, et cetera, in the Fairfax Shopping Center. Uh, until recently, a couple years ago in this recession, we owned the UPS store down on 9th Street. So hmm. there might be a lot of people watching this show who would see me in a different garb and different clothing in a different role, but I spent uh, seven years down there at the UPS store in Wilmington and very familiar with people in the city. Um, Jeff was a uh, professional life and health insurance uh, employee and executive, and I had a career, and I retired back in 2004 when I ran for insurance commissioner for the, my first dip into politics. Mm -hmm. I am now back and uh, excited to be running for governor uh, to try to affect policies that'll help people here in the state. Well, that's great. So uh, longtime Delaware resident, uh, uh, insurance background, but more importantly, in, in my opinion, a small business background as you've uh, run uh, run the mailboxes out and uh, or owned and operated the mailboxes yeah. out in uh, Fairfax and then you had the UPS store yeah. here. Well, I think the big issue is jobs. And, yeah. and, and one of the things we've tried to do is, as the Republican Party is run a slate of candidates who are people with business backgrounds, uh, people who uh, run businesses, make a payroll, who are down to earth and who are real, who really understand the issues that Delawareans are going through. Well, let me ask you a question uh, about jobs, because you're, you're running against uh, a governor that many people view as a quote unquote businessman. And a lot of Republicans switched their registration back in 2008 to vote for him in the primary. Many of them rue the day that they did that, actually. But, but uh, he's been on all sorts of TV shows. I tell you, if, 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 I'm, I think he's on TV more than Oprah is now. Uh, he's been on CNBC. He's been on Bloomberg. He's been on MSNBC. And, and, and he talks about jobs and business. Now, I know in the News Journal, there's been a series of stories of the... Uh, the uh, riverfront and the tens of millions of dollars that have been given to some powerful developers. Um, and, and then, of course, there's another hotel that, that they're getting significant state subsidy to build down at the riverfront. And, and there's, been, uh, there's been over $300 million in, in Delaware taxpayer money that's gone to the riverfront. And, of course, the, the mayor, uh, in his own unique, and I might say, Odd. Uh, uh, how do I say this? <laughs> Basically, said that anybody who's complaining about it is BS, and he used the full eight letters, not just the right. two. Um, so here you got a guy that's throwing money around. He's given over fifteen million dollars to big money center banks. He's given tens of millions of dollars to uh, to the riverfront. Uh, um, is that business? I don't think that's business at all. And, and the thing to remember, it's not his money he's throwing around. It's your money, it's my money, it's every taxpayer in Delaware's money. Everybody who buys anything in the state of Delaware, there's a gross receipts tax that the business has to pay on that sale. We don't call it a sales tax because it's applied to the business, not to the consumer. So everybody who, who buys anything in the state of Delaware is paying a tax. Sure, sure. Um, and, 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 and what happens is, if you think about running a business, and in these tough t economic times, I mean, um, I've done this up and down the state, and I would encourage any voter, if they want to educate themselves on the issue, to just go in and visit their corner business person. Here in Delaware, 80% of our private sector employment are businesses with 20 employees or less. I mean, we are a business whose business is small business. Mm -hmm. You go in and you talk to those folks, they have to look at costs every day, they have to look at how they can make a dollar every day. They have to look at their margins. They have to look at the salaries they pay. I mean, very, very good business people are just breaking even in this economic environment. It's a tough economic environment. Now, that's not news to anybody. But governments don't know how to do that. 
When governments try to run businesses, they're big, large bureaucracies, and they are inefficient, and they are bloated, and they try to buy their way out of problems. And that's exactly what the governor's done. Um, $19 million to Fisker for an automobile plant that sits locked, nobody working at it, and we don't really know what the deal is going to be Nobody going is ever going to be working at that site. Uh, uh, it's just <laughs> Charlie Copeland's opinion, but uh, since over the last week, uh, one of the Karma automobiles caught fire in some guy's garage and burned down his garage and his other cars, I just don't see a lot of people standing in line to buy the follow-on, and, and certainly uh, not from a plant here in Delaware. But I think the way you can kind of characterize that is, is people who are friends of Jack or friends of the government, who are people who have bought influence, have the opportunity to get those gifts. And the rest of us... But that's supposed to be what Republicans are about, right? That, that Republicans are friends of big business and, and, and the little guy gets the, the raw deal. How come the Democrat governor, Jack Markell, can get away with throwing tens of millions of dollars to nothing less than cronies uh, here in the state and yet walk away clean? Well, I, I think it's a great opportunity. That's one of the reasons I'm in this race. Jack is everything that Republicans are criticized for being without the results on the other side of actually <laughs> creating jobs and balancing a budget and, and, and being successful. So I think we have a real opportunity to kind of talk about Jack if that's the kind of businessman you know, that's bad businessmen. Yeah, and they're good yeah. businessmen who add to the community, and their businesses are successful because people want to do business there. Well, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say this because I can, because I'm not running for anything. Um, you know, when he ran in 2008, he talked about, oh, I was the 13th employee at Nextel. I even named the company. Well, Nextel tanked. <laughs> so now it tanked after he sold his stock, ironically enough. Uh, but... Um, if he really doesn't have a particularly great business record, um, and the businesses he's invested in in Delaware, Fisker, uh, Bloom Energy, and, and, I, and I will add this on Bloom Energy, that Bloom Energy is going to get its government subsidy from the power bill from Delmarva. And everybody in the listening area of this show right now is a Delmarva customer, unless you live in Middletown or And you don't have a choice. Like and you do not, well, you, it's, it's a very difficult choice, and, and actually in this case, because Delmarva is the, owns the line coming in, you don't have a choice because this is a right. non-bypassable charge, irrespective of who's making the power, right. it's coming in. So you, do not, so you are being taxed to pay an above market rate for a gas, uh, a natural gas power plant when we could build a cheap natural gas power plant and actually lower our energy costs. And, and, and we have income tax exemptions. We take people of lower income and we don't charge them taxes. There's an exemption for very, very small businesses on the gross receipts tax, that hidden sales tax. There's no exemption on this tax. Every single person, every single business that receives, every nonprofit that receives a Delmarva power bill has to pay that subsidy to Bloom. For the next 21 years, regardless of what Bloom does. Even though it is just a natural gas fired power plant that is inefficient, basically. And so this is our business I mean, it, it's, 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 yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an anti-business deal. It's anti-competitive. It's not rewarding businesses that do well versus businesses that do poorly. It's just a flat out, here's a check you're gonna get every month for the next 21 years because you were able to lobby the state to get it. Because you were powerful, you were connected, and you have access to me and the low-income Delmarva Power customer here in the city of Wilmington gets the raw deal. Absolutely. It, it, it's a terrible deal. And, and, and again, it comes back to that's what Republicans get accused <laughs> of, even though there are many of us who, who don't believe, you know, sure. we, we believe in, hey, let the market work, but give everybody the, the, the playing field as level as we can make it, yeah, it not, not angling and, it. And did you go back to my earlier comments? You know, those businessmen that are working hard every day to turn out to make a profit, how to make a payroll, how to keep their business working, that, that's the nature. They have to compete. They have to be out there looking at how the, the, the economic marketplace is changing. Bloom doesn't have to do any of that. Bloom is going to get that money for 21 years whether we need a gas power plant or we don't need a gas power plant. It's just exactly why government should not and cannot create jobs in our economy. Um, as you've been going around the state and, and talking about jobs, um, what, what are some of the messages that, that, that you're hearing from others 
and, and there may be outside of jobs that, that you want to touch on. Well, well, what I'd like to really do, shift a little bit over, is to crime. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think I have a compelling story, you know, crime. Crime, um, um, you know, there's fear people have being in their homes. There's in this market here in Wilmington. I was a crime victim myself. In my store, my UPS store on 9th Street, I was robbed at gunpoint uh, back in 2006 by a man who had gone to jail for armed robbery, who was released on parole, who within 30 days of being released on parole came into my store as well as 40 other stores, robbed me at gunpoint. I wound up testifying against him. He is now serving a life sentence in jail for that robbery. But coincidentally, that's just not the whole story. The rest of the story is on the same day that I received the endorsement of the Republican Party at our state convention in Rehoboth Beach, that same storefront, which is now empty, was broken into by a burglar. A Wilmington police officer followed the burglar into that location, cornered him, there was an altercation, and the cop shot and killed hmm. that burglar. I mean, now here we have a, a store with almost nothing of value in it. You know, maybe he broke in to steal some copper pipes or some metal, sure. and it winds up in a tragic death. It will change that officer's life for the Absolutely. rest of his life, having taken a life in the line of duty. But I don't think there's often a guy running for governor who has been a victim of armed robbery and who has spent seven years of his life in the same location where somebody is shot and killed. Right. I understand crime. It has a horrible negative effect on growth on, you know, I mean, you know, how does your child do homework if they're afraid of crime in the community? How do you sleep at night? How do you, you know, it's the woman who goes to the grocery store who holds her purse a little tighter because she's concerned about the strange looking guy in the parking lot. Or even, you know, if you've got your kids with you and you're a woman or even a, even a, even a father, you go, to, you go to shop and you're concerned about your safety in the parking lot of that store. I mean, it is a, it is a major problem and I don't hear the state or the county government responding um, Wilmington has a tough, tough job. I mean, we, we need to put more resources into policing, and we need to solve this crime issue. It, it, it's a serious problem. That, coupled with the bad economy, really makes it tough right. to, be, to be successful and raise your family and realize the dreams that you have, you know, as a Delawarean. Right. I mean, I, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm a root cause kind of a guy, uh, and I try to drill down and say, what's the, the root cause, what's the root cause? Uh, what's the next level of the onion, so to speak? And um, crime is a is a is a terrible issue that that we face. As as then as you said, as the economy goes, I mean, you know, people have to eat, and they got to keep a roof over their head. And how do you do that if you have no education and no job opportunities? And this government and the government before it, and to a sense, the government before that did little or nothing, and certainly in, in, in the city of Wilmington, other than, again, throwing money at big, big banks, and the big banks, great people, don't get me wrong, but are they really doing a lot to create an economic vibrancy to the city of Wilmington, to create uh, the small corner stores and, and the bike shops and the carpenter shops and the woodwork and the, the internet places and you know all those sort of small businesses mm -hmm. that and, and, and I've often said on this show that the hardest place to do business in the state of Delaware is the city of Wilmington oh, for absolutely. a small business. You've got three layers of government. They all have different rules and regulations. And to try to get something done takes forever. I mean, you know, the Empire State Building was built in 11 months. You couldn't get a building one quarter the size, one eighth of the size here in Wilmington approved. Yeah. 11 months. No, it, it, it is a big problem of regulation and it's a problem of opportunity. And, and we have, tr I mean, uh, you know, I've dealt with the city government. I, I, I bought and rehabbed homes in the city. The, the, the paperwork process of going through that is just insane. It, it's, it's just very, very difficult. I feel very much for the small, you know, the, the entrepreneur, the guy who wants to buy the house next door that needs to be fixed up and fix it up and put it back on the market and sell it because he's not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. it. It requires a team of attorneys and a team of accountants and a team of people who really know what they're doing and the critical mass required to do what should not be that difficult is, is very difficult. And, and to then know the people in the government to be able to buy the access may be a little bit crude way to say it. but. Fundamentally, that's what you're talking about. But, but again, it gets down to these connections, and that's not how the world should be. The world should really be set up that government is responsive to the needs of, of its citizens. Um, um, you know, so I, I really think that's one of our big issues as Republicans. 
removing regulations, unnecessary regulations. You know, we need to have food safety regulations. We need to have regulations regulating the hours that bars are open because of how people behave, sure. all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, government needs to be much more responsive to citizens and to businesses. Um, and again, I would, I would have people go share their, their questions and their comments with business people in the city and ask them. Um, Every single business will tell you a story about how they've interacted with government and there's just been a crazy outcome. And, 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 and successful business people just take that as how they have to deal with it day to day. And, and the land use attorneys and the people who have to work with L&I and all, they make a lot of money, but you're not hiring somebody, you know, you're not opening that restaurant in which you're hiring wait staff and people like that who are then you know, in the community. And so those people don't have a job, and so what are they gonna do? They're going to go to crime or something because, again, you guys got to eat. Yeah, and, and, and you and I know this. I mean, economic growth, <clears throat> the engine of economic growth coming out of a recession, it's not large businesses that start rehiring again. Right. It's the small business. It's the mom and pop business. That's where all the economic growth is. You want to have a uh, company with 10,000 employees, you start with a company with 10 employees and you grow it over time. What's interesting is, is there was actually there's a, there's a, a group that does studies on, on entrepreneurship called the Kaufman, Ewan Kaufman Foundation. And about three years ago, they came out with a report that uh, from, from 1989 through 2009, large businesses were net job destroyers. Sure. It was small businesses that were net creators. And what happened was that smaller businesses would get large, the big companies would come in and buy them, and then rationalize the cost, they'd get rid of people and build them into their supply right. chain and everything else. So the big businesses actually were destroying jobs, the small businesses were actually creating jobs. So what are we doing here in Delaware? We're throwing money at big businesses. They destroy jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we wonder, gee, why isn't this working? And, and, and the governor's very good at having press conferences to say, oh, I've been told that next year they're going to hire 500 people. Isn't this great? Let me put that on my total. Well, it's a little bit like the jobs from the stimulus plan that we kept saying, oh, ten, tens of thousands of jobs created or saved. But when the results finally came in, there were no jobs created. And, and let's talk about that number a second. It's 30,500, roughly, people who are unemployed in the state of Delaware who are looking for work. Now, those are the people that show up and say, I want a job, right. and I can't find one. It doesn't count the people who have stopped actively looking. It doesn't count the people who have taken a job because they're looking for a job in their area of expertise. You know, they're, they're underemployed or they're part-time employed, and so they're not counted in that number. But that number, you know, if we just take a second think about it, it's the population of the city of Newark, Delaware. Every man, woman, and child, plus 3,000 additional people. Right. That's the number of people who are here in the state looking for work. It's a massive number, and it really explains why we're in such a, uh, uh, you know, lackluster economy why we can't get growth going, and then all those costs layer back on the state. We've got food stamps and housing costs and unemployment compensation, and all that money is going to taking care of those people who are unemployed, when really what we need to do is get them back to work where right. they're contributing revenue to the state, and we can turn the corner on this recession. Right. And, and, and people say, well, why, you know, why didn't the government stimulus work? Why didn't, uh, why didn't the government just pouring money into the economy create jobs? And, and my response there is, where does the government get the money? Well, they eventually get it from the taxpayer. From when, when, again, Delaware has a gross receipts tax, where every time you go buy something in the store, you're paying a tax. When you pay your power bill, you're paying a tax. Your phone bill, you're paying a tax. Your heat, uh, property tax. So they're taking that money from you to hand it out. So uh, imagine if you're in a, you, you own a retail establishment and someone comes in and they take all the money in your register and they run out of the store. And then 15 minutes later, they come into the store, they fill up their basket of, with stuff, you know, their, their, their shopping cart, they come to the register, and they use the money they just took from you to buy all that stuff. Well, no value was created. You didn't make a profit. You've got a loss. Well, there's no different from that person, from the government coming, taking all that money from you, handing it to that person to now come and buy in your store. No value was created. No wealth was created. You didn't make more money so you could go hire another person. You're net behind. And that's why government stimulus does not work. And, and uh, that's why the economy hasn't, because as long as we're keeping businesses from expanding through regulation and increased taxes, they can't hire people, they can't build jobs. When you've got regulators who are, who are standing around uh, 
doing their job because they hear the rules and, the, and the, the legislature and the governor said, here are what the rules are. So it's not really the regulator's fault, so to speak. Um, and, and they're slowing everything down and, and, and keeping people from growing businesses and having jobs. i got a, a great story. Down on 9th Street, the city of Wilmington used stimulus money to cut the trees down. Because they were, and, and why are you cutting these perfectly good trees down? Because we are creating jobs. Well, they cut the trees down, and then the theory was they were going to come back and plant new trees <laughs> and stimulate the economy anymore. But the stimulus dollars ran out, so they cut the perfectly healthy trees down, left no trees, and now we have, we have holes in the sidewalk where there used to be trees with, you know, the, the, the grates around them. And you sit there and you go, you know, you know, you know, who's spending money on cutting healthy trees down with the concept that we'll plant good trees? Um, and that will and, create and, and, wealth. And, and this is creating wealth and jobs. <laughs> and of course, it's going to make the city greener, you know. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it's, and, and, and the intention of government is absolutely good. I mean, they're really, somebody's sitting in a cubicle saying, you know, I've got the trees down and it'll make the city nicer. The problem is they're not out there on the front line. And right. that small business owner who's out there on the front line who says, gee, it was a mistake to buy that product. Right. You know, gee, that didn't work. We didn't make money. Is making that decision every single day to make that business run efficiently. Right. And it's all of those decisions collectively which make the economy work. Government just cannot compete against the, the minds of all these business owners and consumers who are out there making decisions every day to make our economy work. We've got about two minutes left. Half hour goes fast. So um, give, your, give your shtick, uh, Jeff Craig, governor, candidate, uh, Republican, state of Delaware. Give your stick. Um, um, it's about jobs. It's about using the government as a tool to help businesses grow. When the pie that we all share here in the state of Delaware is growing, we can do a better job of distributing it. We can do a better job of taking care of people. We have money to educate our children. We have uh, money to pave the roads. We have money to, to take care of economic plans and growth and all of that. If the pie is not growing, we have a society where we are all fighting over a smaller piece of the pie, and that's when it becomes highly political, it becomes highly charged, it becomes where one group takes advantage of another group, and we just can't do that. We're all in this together. We've got to figure out how to grow that pie as a state and bring everybody along with opportunities, you know, education and jobs, so that people can live their lives the way they want to live their lives. You know, it's about, it's, it's about, we talk as Republicans about smaller government, but it's really more efficient government. It's better government. Right, right. Uh, I, I think it's a great message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've been on this show for four years uh, now, and, and I said the best person to take care of me is me. Absolutely. But I need two things. I need an education, and I need job opportunity. And especially here in the city of Wilmington, there are neither. Right. And it has been that way for decades. And that's one of the, the messages that I try to bring is that's why you need to look at Republican Party candidates. We don't have a monopoly on great candidates. We don't have a monopoly on great ideas. But at least we have ideas and candidates that can be debated and, and, and look at them and look around and say, am I, you know, am I doing better today than I was four years ago, eight years ago, 12 years ago, 16 years ago, 20 years ago? Because 20? that's how long the Democrats have been running the place. Uh, in the city of Wilmington, Newcastle County, statewide. And so I hope you give a, a, a look at the Republican candidates, Jeff Craig, Cher Valenzuela, uh, Ben Mobley, and, and make a determination as to uh, Tom Kovac as to what, uh, what you want to see happen locally in the state of Delaware. We have some great candidates. Jeff is one of those, uh, and, and, and so I hope you do that. Um, so, Jeff, I appreciate you very Thank you. much, coming, Thank you very uh, much coming on this morning.